breaking news this morning. A U.S. Marine Corps helicopter goes down off the coast of Australia, prompting a search and rescue mission. The military has confirmed one of its MV-22 aircrafts was involved in a mishap. The aircraft was in Queensland as part of the Talisman Sabre joint training exercise between Australian and United States military forces, but details are scarce. Australian Defense Minister Maurice Payne says the incident occurred off the coast of Shoalwater Bay in Queensland State. In a statement made this morning, the Prime Minister said she would offer Australia's support in any way that could be of assistance. U.S. ships, small boats and aircrafts are currently searching the area. So far, it is not known if there are any casualties. We'll continue to update you as this story develops on our WHIO News app. Columbus police are trying to find out who opened fire on three young men overnight. Authorities say 18-year-old Tawan Smith and 20-year-old, 20, 20 I should say, Avante Moore were shot in their backs and taken to the hospital. 17-year-old Marquise Reynolds was also with them but was thankfully not injured. Two of the boys tell detectives they were inside a car on the 600 block of East Cosseth Street when they were approached by an unknown male who began shooting at them. Both of the boys who were shot are in stable condition this morning. Anyone with information? about the shooting is asked to contact the Columbus Police Assault Unit at 614-645-4189. A crash on Union Road earlier this week was fatal. 75-year-old Michelle Qualey of Germantown was killed in the collision. This happened at the intersection of 725 and Union Road near the Miami Township Miamisburg line. Troopers say a car was stopped at the intersection and pulled out in front of a Saturn driven by Qualey. She then hit another vehicle head-on on 725. On these roads, there are several speed limits posted nearby, including 25 miles per hour on Union Road, but a couple hundred yards away, it's 55 miles per hour heading west on 725. Neighbors say something needs to change. It would be better if it was a traffic light instead of a four-way because there's too much traffic on 725 for a four-way stop. Two other drivers went to the hospital in this crash. Law enforcement across Montgomery County are on the lookout for an escaped inmate. Police arrested 30-year-old Randy Lee Sellers early this morning on South Dixie Drive. It wasn't long before officials say Sellers escaped and broke into at least one home in Kettering where he stole a car. Information on what Sellers did to be arrested has not yet been released. We'll continue to keep you updated on our air and online at WHIO.com. Police have arrested a third suspect wanted in connection with a car break-in that led to a shooting and a manhunt in Xenia. A 16-year-old boy was arrested Thursday. He's facing several charges, including complicity to felonious assault. Police said earlier this week a person living on West 2nd Street found three people rummaging through his car. One of them fired a shot and hit the man in the leg. After that, police were able to find and arrest Nathaniel Gorman and another teen. Prosecutors say an 18-year-old woman burned her baby's body and buried the remains in her yard in Carlisle. Investigators had a search warrant when they first went to Skylar Richardson's home July 14th after prosecutors say her doctor called police. Richardson was arrested July 20th. She was charged with reckless homicide for her baby's death as investigators served a second search warrant at her home. Yesterday afternoon, a Warren County grand jury indicted Richardson on five counts, including aggravated murder for her baby's death. This morning she is in jail and will stay there until at least Monday. New Center 7's John Bedell has the latest information on this story. I just feel sick to my stomach. The latest round of allegations against Skylar are difficult to hear for her neighbors in Carlisle. Because I'm currently uh, 13 weeks pregnant and I couldn't put myself in her shoes. I Casey Isaacs and her boyfriend Sam Jeffries live three houses down from the Richardsons. It's caused a lot of commotion in the neighborhood. And we just kind of pulled in one day and there was just cops galore over at their house and they had the, the tape all. After Richardson was indicted, Warren County Prosecutor David Fornshell said what happened at the Eagle Ridge Drive home the night of May 6th and into the seventh, two days after her senior prom, was murdered. That she did give birth to a uh, newborn infant and that uh, she caused the death of that infant. She subsequently burned the infant and buried the infant in the backyard of her own residence. Investigators say Richardson was between 38 and 40 weeks pregnant, full term, when all of that happened over the course of a few hours. Fornshell did not say whether the baby was a boy or a girl or how the infant was killed. He said they might not ever know what caused the baby's death. 
Their body was buried 10 weeks before investigators uncovered it. Fornshell did say all this happened because this family obsessed over what would happen if people in Carlisle found out Skyler was pregnant. In viewing this evidence, uh, came down to a situation that if members of the community were to find out that the Richardson girl was pregnant and perhaps gave birth, and even if after giving birth gave that child up for adoption, that was something that simply was not going to be accepted um, in that household, at least at least by Skyler and her, and her mother. Fornshell said more details and a deeper dive into the Richardson family dynamic will come out during Skyler's trial. This is only the beginning. Neighbors say they just want to see the end of this saga here in Carlisle. Lately, you know, there's cars driving through all the time and, and news and, and a lot of police. And so I just kind of hope that once it all dies down, it'll do exactly that. And just everything will go back to normal. John Bedell, New Center 7. So far, Richardson is the only is only facing the one charge, but prosecutors say this is still an open case and they are open to charges for others involved if new evidence is found. We called Richardson's defense attorney for comment, but have not heard back yet. A fire breaks out early this morning, leaving one man injured. It happened at 501 Robert Simmons Drive in Carlisle around 10 o'clock this morning. Investigators say the man who lives there was cooking when grease caught on fire. It appears that he was cooking on the stovetop and the grease that he was using caught fire. He went to reach for the pot and in the process of trying to take the pot outside, he dropped it. The grease splashed up on him. So he was transported to Miami Valley with pretty significant burns to both his upper and lower extremities in both hands. When crews arrived, smoke was pouring from the house. The man remains in Miami Valley Hospital. New Center 7 is working to learn the identity of the man injured as well as his condition. We'll update you with any new details on our WHIO News app.